All right, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, this is Micah Carter here just talking to you for a quick couple, few minutes or whatever about some vaping techniques or understanding vaping. You know, you might be just trying to learn for the first time how e-cigarettes work or maybe you're already kind of experienced. Even if you're already experienced, you probably still have uh, little nuances that you can learn about e vaping. But uh, the main thing, just keeping it simple, is just to understand your really three kind of main components to your vaping is just the battery, a tank, and an atomizer. Now you also have a tip in many situations, which is just comfortable for vaping. It just allows you to, you know, easily, you know, some kind of tip. This one here is silicone. It's made out of silicone. They have one made out of wood, stone, and metal, and so forth, of course. And you probably want to have a pure metal as opposed to one that rubs off easily, you know. But I like the silicone myself, or maybe even wood. I haven't tried that much, but the silicone is nice for the teeth. It doesn't hurt your teeth. And, you know, from my perspective, especially with these bigger batteries even, you definitely don't want to have a hard tip at the end because it can hurt your teeth. So uh, that's one factor and maybe some other reasons why as well. But um, anyway, uh, a couple things about the vaping is one thing, you always want to keep the stem, the breathe, you know, the inhaling stem cleaned out, which whatever the tank is, you can pretty much tell what that looks like and where it's at it's inside here. Now, if your tip comes off, you definitely want to clean out both the tip in and on the outside, preferably every time you're cleaning it. But, you know, sometimes you might shortcut a little bit depending on the situation. But you always want to be cleaning your e-cigarette, your, your, your electronic vapor, because juice builds up inside here and it causes problems with your vaping. Sometimes you get what's called flooding. It's kind of like the engine of a car in some ways. You know, you have juice in here, which is kind of acting as a lubricant and a coolant, kind of both in a way, uh, kind of like motor oil or radiator fluid in your car. And uh, so you want to have juice going over the wick at all times. In other words, you don't want to run your engine without oil going through it, right? It could burn it up, crack it, mess it up. It's the same thing with your atomizer. So you want to have juice going through it, that means making sure you have juice in your tank, at least enough to make sure the, the wick is, you know, you don't want to do what's called a dry vape, firing your battery with a, no juice inside of the wicking material inside, which would be made of cotton typically. And uh, maybe preferably even organic cotton, but, you know, I just get cotton balls myself, and I a lot of times do what I call a rebuild or a, a rewick. And there's really two different things. The rewick means just replacing the cotton inside, which can't be done on every type of atomizer, but with some of them you can. And you can learn more about that or take a look at how that's done. It's usually just a simple matter of taking the piece of cotton out that's inside of it gently with a pair of tweezers or something along that lines. And uh, using clean, you know, uh, tools, but also and, uh, just rewicking it. But... Uh, you know, you might have to practice it or kind of learn about re-wicking. You could also look up videos on that. But uh, those are just a couple of things as far as the wicking of the material, the cotton material that soaks up the juice, right? So that cotton material inside the atomizer, which I can show you one right here. You can see here's an atomizer right here that goes in this tank. And this particular atomizer is a titanium atomizer. And we can see inside, you can't see it very well because my camera's not great here, but... We can see inside here there's there's a, a little metal coil, hopefully. Let me see if I can get it to focus. Uh, anyway, that metal coil on the inside is a piece of metal wrapped around as a coil. And it wraps around the wicking material, which is running horizontally. Well, in this, if we look at it like this, it's horizontal. Uh, and, and the inside is running across. And we can see the wicking material on the, the outside, hopefully a little bit. Uh, it's not great here, but... That, that cotton wicking material is sticking out of a whole little hole on the side of the atomizer. And it's also on the other side as well. So, but anyway, the bottom line is, I can't really get it into great focus right there, but the bottom line is that wicking material can be changed out usually without damaging the coil, the metal coils that wrap around it if you're careful and you know how to do it. Uh, like I said, you can... You can do it yourself in many cases, but not every case. Some atomizers come apart. These ones come apart easily, and they twist apart, and then you can see inside, and you can kind of pull the cotton out and replace it easily. Uh, now, uh, once you uh, re replace the wick, you also want to, like what, before you replace the wick, too, the cotton wick, uh, cotton material on a rebuildable coil, uh, you know, you want to make sure you kind of know what you're doing a little bit. I mean, it's not like it's highly dangerous necessarily, but you want to be careful that you're not, like, firing it while you're doing it, uh, stuff like that, you know, so you want to make sure you understand what you're doing.
okay so as far as uh, when you're doing the processes but the main thing is also with the juice that gets inside the cotton inside of the atomizer yeah uh, you always got to vape up that juice before you re-soak it with fresh juice so you don't necessarily want to fill your tank all the way full uh, you want to have maybe a little bit of room in your tank so you can dry vape in other words you can turn your e-cigarette upside down because inside here we have juice inside this tank right here it's filled up now it, while we have it right side up the juice is sitting right on top of the area where the atomizer is so even though you get airflow in through the sides there's a couple airflow vents even though you get some airflow in there uh, still it's like the juice is always sitting right on top of the wick now if we turn it upside down and we start taking vapes while it's upside down and the juice isn't totally full it allows the juice to fall away from the wick and that means that the wick has juice in it still typically if you just soaked it in other words you turn it upside down you just soak it with juice you turn it upside down uh, you know, so right side up you turn it upside down then the juice is falling away towards the bottom of the tank so if you take your vapes while they're upside down you get a few vapes before the wick dries up out of juice and if you have temperature control hopefully then uh, you can be assured you're not going to burn it easily now if you're not on temperature control you want to be cautious and yeah, just gently vape the juice out of the wick so that you vape all of the juice out before more juice gets onto the wick because uh, then you're going to re-soak it. It's kind of like wringing out a rag. It's not the best analogy, but in other words, you want to use up all the juice that's inside the wick before you re-soak it with fresh juice. And now, is that a strict rule? No. You can vape right side up much of the time, but it's a certain kind of balance. It's a certain nuance between dry vaping and regular vaping. When I say dry vaping, I mean the upside down vaping a few times usually to get juice completely dried out of the wick so that way you can re-soak it with fresh juice and there's a few different reasons why you want to do that one of the main reasons is that the juice builds up over time and builds up layers of thick build up of thicker parts of the juice like the vg which is the vegetable glycerin it's thicker it takes more uh typically more temperature to, to cook it totally you know i don't mean like cook i mean like vape it but uh um, and so that stuff builds up inside of the wick. So if you don't completely kind of dry it out in cycles by doing dry vapes like regularly, you know, completely dry vaping out the wick good and before re-soaking it, then it's going to get this thick buildup of BG and you're not going to be getting good vapes and you're going to have a hard time re-establishing your vapor back to normal, restoring it. So, but if you do it more regularly, you can keep it from getting that kind of buildup and your vapors will work better. I mean, like I said, you always want to be drying out the stem inside here so uh, and i'm gonna take this one here and give that one away i have another one right here but uh, same idea like i said just you always want to be drying out the stem with paper and that means like some tissue paper you, know, you can use toilet paper or you know napkin no not napkin but i mean uh, uh you know um kleenex or paper towel or something just stick a little thread of some paper kind of like that and you can do it inside the tip here, but also you want to get inside the stem. Gently, not enough to hurt an atomizer necessarily, but just gently put it up there so it soaks any excess juice out of the mouthpiece. So there's not a bunch of juice flooding your system, if that makes sense. That way you can get a good clean vape. Or uh, just like when you're starting a car, you don't want to press on the gas too much before you start it because you're going to flood it with gasoline and you won't get a good ignition. It's the same thing with this. So those are just a few tips. Now I encourage you to maybe look for any other videos I might have. Like I said, my name is Micah. I encourage you to add me on Facebook too. If you're on Facebook, I'd love to hear from some of you all and to fellow vapers, of course. Uh, I'm at, you know, uh, Cool MTN. That's Cool, like Mountain abbreviated, C-O-O-L M-T-N on Facebook. You know, Facebook.com slash Cool MTN. So it's definitely... Send me a heads up, send me a friend request, and definitely I like to link up with like-minded people. I mean, of course, I play music, and I also into business and some other things as well, and certainly encourage you to check out some more of these videos that we talk about a little bit more nuanced stuff. I might make a better video where you can see maybe like the rebuilding or the reawaking or some of the atomizers, and definitely some more tips on how to make your atomizers last longer, how to get a better vapor, and really how to overall vape better. And uh, it also might cover a few of the flavors that uh, I like the most, too, in some other videos. So once again, Micah Carter here signing out. Certainly appreciate any comments and feedback, and maybe if any of this information does help, certainly appreciate any positive feedback as well, and hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye.